This week on Comedy Hype News, CJ and Sade talk with comedian Pierre, most known from BAPS and How to Be a Player. The veteran comedian would join a heated debate discussing whether black comedians need white audiences in order to become a huge success. Why you keep pushing that image? And that's what black people say, like, okay, we cool with Tiffany, we cool with Kevin, we cool with my man Tracy, we cool with everybody, but why don't you show other comedians? We also got a chance to catch up with comedian Willie Robo in New York, who also gave his insight into the debate. Comedian Pierre, <laughs> welcome to Comedy Hype News. Well, hey. thank y'all for having me. Yes, yes ladies, here. yes. I've always yes, liked to be... So excited. I enjoy being in between two beautiful women. I tell people that um, you are the originator of putting the light skinned brothers on. Okay, well, I've heard that you before. Am I? Do you, th you are. Okay, I appreciate that. I'll give that to you. Okay. Well, it's good to have you on. I see you started comedy when you were 17 years old. You started with the heavy hitters. Yes, man. Martin yeah. Lawrence. Yep, yep, on yep. The yep. Tommy Davidson, yeah. Dave Chappelle. I started in Washington, D.C. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I started out of high school. Uh, it was it was fun. It was uh, I didn't know anything. Eddie Murphy was all the rage at the time, so everybody wanted to be at next Eddie Murphy. And um, you know, I, I saw in a, in the newspaper uh, there was like open mic night um, at the comedy club. I didn't know how to do it, what to do, so I drove out that night, um, not for open mic, but for that Friday night. And went on, talked to a guy who was doing comedy, asked him what do you do, what do you do, how do you get into comedy? This nigga gonna tell me, come back, and get five, five minutes of jokes, and come on back Thursday for amateur night. I'm driving home thinking, what is five minutes of jokes? I didn't know what the, you know five you minutes of jokes were. Material yes, I did. I, I, yeah, but I stopped back then. Some niggas still borrowing today. <laughs> But yeah, I took Rodney Dangerfield and a guy named Stephen Wright. Their material, they had albums out, and I twisted them into some urban, you know, urban spin to them, and killed. And people were like, "Man, you funny as hell." I'm like, "This ain't nothing," you know. But of course, I was taking somebody's material. But then after about six months, I started doing my own stuff. Yeah, yeah you, you have your shows this weekend in Atlanta, Comedy Wolf Theater. Wolf, Wolf. Theater. I can't wait. You, I don't blame you. It's part of my Johnny Handsome tour I got going out right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in Richmond, Virginia at the Funny Bone Valentine's Day weekend. So come on out, Richmond, Virginia. I've never been to Richmond, Virginia to do stand up. So I'm looking forward, you know, to the people at the Funny Bone. I heard from one of the best clubs. Um, so recently we had Tom, Alex Thomas come mm -hmm. on. Funny guy. Yeah, funny guy. I like awesome. Him. A legend like yourself. Uh, I'm, 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 of some classic movies, classic movies. <laughs> um, but he expressed that he, he, he almost made it when Ooh. he was a part of Castaway. Okay. The scene got canceled. Okay. Um, how do you feel about that in terms of, do you feel like we, as a culture or community, need the white laughter or the white acceptance to, to, to reach a certain level of success? Uh, yeah. And I'll say that for, for, now we say white laughter. Do you mean that we need white people to like what we do? That mainstream acceptance. Sure. Well, think about it. I mean, it is. It's, the mainstream has more money. There's more money, you know, than in the mainstream. If you're popular, black people make what? 13% of the black population? I mean, population out here? So think about it. If you get, now you can live a certain nice living with just black money. You know, that's fine. You can live. There's, there's comedians that do a good job that don't really do the crossover. My girl, Samoa, you know, mm -hmm. you got Bruce Bruce. There's a lot of comedy. DC Kerr, Lunell, they make a good living. You know, you can make a good living. But that next level, come on now, it's got to be the other money. And the other money is what we call, I guess you want to call it white laughter. You know what I'm saying? There's some comedians that we don't think may not be all that funny, but they're doing really well because they have that crossover appeal. Mm -hmm. You might, you know, you see them, they're special. They're like, they ain't even that funny. Well, you know, the other money's coming over there, but sure. Who are some funny. comedians you think are benefiting from that white audience? Um, well, and this is not saying they're not good or bad. I'm not trying to. Right, right, because right. Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey is, you know, mm -hmm. he's benefiting from the other side. Steve Harvey makes a lot more money now since he did all the other stuff, you know, those shows he's doing and pageants and shit and whatever, Family Feud. So he's he's one benefiting. Would you agree with that? I remember before Bernie had passed, Bernie started moving over to being in Bad, uh, bad Santa and all this other stuff. It's, you know, you start moving over. So there's a lot of comedians who, once you cross over and the other people see you, they make a lot more money. Why do you think um, our community says like you're kind of, you're, you, you've sold out right. when you cross over into mainstream? Why do you think that's the, the narrative? Of, of well, once you start enunciating all your syllables and shit, you know, you ever see Steve Harvey sometimes on Family Feud and stuff? Hey there, hi there. Thank you. We talk to the white people and stuff. It's the way we do. You know, we have, we feel like we, people feel like that, they have to change. But one thing I know, and I'm going to live with, with it with me, white folks like black people black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They want soul food. That's why they go into the hood. You know, to get the soul, real soul food. And so I, I think you, we don't have to change. You don't have to change. You know, would you say Chappelle, Chappelle has a crossover appeal. 
But Chappelle is, would you say he's black? Yeah, but is he the typical black comic? No. You know what I'm saying? He's not the typical one that we're used to. You know what I'm saying? So, but he still has crossover. And I don't see him as a sellout or nothing like that. You know, he enunciates all his syllables and stuff. But sometimes we see people who do that, that we feel like, oh, he's changing on us and stuff. Especially when we knew where he came from. It's, I don't mind that they want to cross over or graduate to the next level. Mm -hmm. But one shouldn't change. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because when you change, you're gonna, they want you to be the way they want you. Mm -hmm. And then you're not yourself. But it's not, I'm not going to blame the white people because the white people have accepted Richard Pryor the way he was and so on and so forth. So I, I, you, you do have to change somewhat because you're reaching a wider audience that could be, you know, they can be kind of standoffish. Mm. But don't change your whole self. There's some comedians out there that haven't changed and there's some, you know, like your Mike Epps, your Chris Rocks, they're who they are and they respect it. Mm -hmm. You see? So they're, they're prime examples of that you don't have to change who you are and you can still continue to work. But I think you should stay who you are and let them come to you because they like that. When they want black, they want black. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be ignorant. I don't people think that blacks come in different variations. Mm -hmm. We got street blacks, we got smart, we got educated blacks, but just be that black. Like Barack Obama's a good example. You knew he was black. He spoke well, but he didn't sound white. He didn't sound like a guy named Alan Keyes, you know what I'm saying, or mm -hmm. Brian Gumbel or whoever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He still sounded like a black man with tone and voice, and, and they accepted him. And that was a debate CJ and I had here on mm -hmm. the show. Um, we, we spoke about Tiffany Haddish. Mm -hmm. I personally feel like I, I, I admire the fact that she's remaining who she is. Okay. She's not behaving because now we got she, she's mainstream. She has white people looking at her, mm -hmm. whereas it's so much of the audience that feels like, Oh, she she's bringing chicken to the red carpet. She's mm -hmm. doing this. She's doing this. Like, what y'all want the girl to do? Mm -hmm. you, you want her to change? You know who she is. Right, that's right. who she is. What right. do y'all want the girl to do? But that's not the problem we have in, in the black society. We want to know why do white folks lift that image up so? Why she got to be on everything? I feel like the more teeth you show, the more better you do with white folks. You yeah. smile, teeth you show. smile, all the show, all of them. Okay, when you're more, when you're more like, <laughs> what's up? How y'all doing? You know, I got people I love to death. I have no problem with them, but they'll say some of those like, I love Tracy Morgan. You know, I do do all over y'all. <laughs> like, okay, okay, or whoever the case may be. Kevin Hart, all of them. The more teeth you show, the more happy you are. They feel comfortable with you. The more you're like, we ready, come on, y'all. Is that the only image? Where's the other comics? Why are they uplifting the other comics that aren't like that? So we, I don't have a problem with those comics doing it because we are that's, we, we have different shade and different you know energy. But why do you keep pushing that one? Why do you keep pushing that image? And that's what black people say like, okay, we cool with Tiffany, we cool with Kevin, we cool with my man Tracy, we cool with everybody. But why don't you show other comedians? Mm -hmm. Why don't you put them on the shows all the time? That's where my point is. Like but, if you're able to feed into that stereotype that they want to push, that's where my problem is. Right. Because you know that they want to push that negative stereotype of black people. But you can't mad, you can't be mad at Tiffany for doing yeah, that though. Exactly. Well you can't why? You, no, you can't no, she can't she gotta be who she is. Where do you draw the line here? Where do you think is so when you say like integrity real for Hollywood? Integrity. Okay. It's about integrity, about not selling yourself out. And again, not me no, saying no, no, some no, dumb no. shit to sell them out. No, Come you on. Say you put no. on the dress. But it ain't gonna do selling out. You crazy? It's nothing to do with that. But where you draw the line? And you say here you go. Okay, let me tell you. Right, that, that's not a problem with me to wear a dress in a movie. I play in a character. It's well, a then, then why do you like it's right? Comedy. So are you okay with niggas killing each other in movies that are on power and just selling drugs? You okay with that image? To be put out because wearing a dress is not illegal, but killing somebody and selling drugs is illegal. And you want to perpetuate that image and be okay with it? But if a nigga put a dress on, it's like, hold up, it's too much. Fuck out of here. Man, listen, it's two different things. What the fuck is what? How is it different? Like, okay. I'm putting on a dress okay. and. Okay. A man killing another man, a black man killing another black man is what? There's more black men killing each other than people wearing dresses to worry about. I feel like a man that put on a dress okay. is, is, is pushing. Uh, you're. you're it's, it, you're erasing the masculinity from Fine, yourself. fine. What, 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 what do you call a man killing another man? What, what's that doing? I'd rather, uh, I rather, uh, I rather, I rather see you kill somebody else than be All right, let's talk. Let's talk. Because damn, that's called murder. Rather, that's swear. murder. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. okay. Pimping women and, and, and selling drugs. You ready? That's okay. You better see a nigga pimping women and selling drugs. But I feel like he put ah, dress on. Uh, exactly. You okay with pimping women, selling drugs, and murder? You all right with that image on TV? I'd rather see that than my 
black men oh, in a dress. Oh, God. Like, when we put our black men in dresses, right. we we strip them of their power. Right. We okay. strip them Same of their you. masculinity. Okay. And we strip them of their integrity. Okay. Now, you just sit here and say you draw the line right. of integrity. What's your right, line right. I just told you. Then? Murder and killing and pimping is okay for your son of drugs. So the there's no line. Hold on. To you, there's no line. There's no that, that line. There's not a line there. That's no, that's no, that's, there's no line right there for you. Wow. So my line is this. If you're an actor, you can do what you, you want. That's fair. If, you, if you're an actor, you can do what you want. Exactly. You're an actor. You're playing a character. If you want to wear a dress, murder, kill, that I say is all good to me. Now, what are we worrying about? Our young kids? Well, here's the problem. You need to teach your young kids. So if you have young kids, sit down and teach them the difference. Stop letting the TV teach them and society teach them. And you need to take responsibility. You had that child, so take responsible of that child. And say, you know what, son, this is what I don't want you to do, or this might be wrong, this is why he's wearing a dress, or the guy's murdering people, he's selling drugs, but this is just this, that. You do that. But see, we don't want to do that. We want to be lazy. We want to say, TV, you do the shit. I'm sitting here smoking weed or doing what I want to. I'm out here fucking around. You, my kid, just watch some TV. No, ma'am. Well, you need to do you have entertainer and parents? Do you have There you go. Do you have children? Yes, I do. You have a son? Yes, I, two of them. Would you be okay with your son wearing a dress to school? If that's who he is, yes, it is. Well, Would I be happy with it? No. Happy is one thing. Hold on, hold on. I would be happy. If he came home and said, I want to wear a dress because I saw um, this boy on the internet doing it, or daddy, I saw you in a dress in the movie. No, 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 no. That, that, what would you say then? No, hold on, hold on. No, you're not wearing a dress because you want to wear a dress. It's got, it's got to be something in you. What's right. the reason? Explain to me why you're wearing a dress, why you want to. This is real life. Right, right, exactly. Are you homeless? Are you gay? Are you a transgressor? That's, that's something different. But no, just doing that. Mm -mm. I got when my son come home and say, I want to kill somebody at school, daddy. I saw you on TV. I almost sell drugs, daddy. What you want me to say? That's cool. That's, I, got, I don't draw a lot there. Uh, back to you again. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it is. You got a life versus entertainment. Yeah, right, right. It's all you good. Don't know where to draw that line. All right, so listen. Right. Pierre, you have this book out. My yes. Your homies and phonies, Hollywood. Of Hollywood. Of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It's it was extremely phonies. interesting. Who's some phonies you ran into? In Why y'all want about the phonies? What about the homies? See, 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 yeah, yeah, well, y'all just nasty. Get into the no. nitty-gritty. No, ain't no so nitty. A lot of homies, a lot of homies and stuff, yeah. There's, there's a lot of, uh, homie, yeah, oh, DJ Andrew. We know no. the light skins. Well, okay, the phonies are in the book, you gotta buy the book. It's on Amazon. You go to Amazon and get the daggone book. Now, that's one of the homies I got. Uh, uh, I got a, uh, I got, I got a, uh, Mike Tyson, I talk about Mike Tyson. We used to hang out all the time, you know. Well, not all the time, but I hung out with Mike Tyson a couple of times. And he'd always want to bring his, tell his boys to go get, you know, some girls to come to VIP to chill with us. Mm -hmm. And five minutes later, this boy would come back and be like, man, what's wrong with you? They're not coming. Mike, they ain't coming. He's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's, what's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> I'm like, Mike, you biting ears, nigga, you biting ears. Girls like to wear glasses. They be in a club with that nigga like this. I'm with Mike Tyson. So I'm with Mike Tyson. The oh, fuck, nigga? But there's a lot of stories in there, but crazy funny stories about Halle Berry and all that stuff. So, um, Aaliyah, Tupac, I did a video with Tupac. I hung out with him. Chris Rock, yeah. Yes, ma'am, Chris Rock. You know everybody? Wendy? Wendy, what? Yep, Wendy. Mm -hmm. You hung out with Wendy? No, I met her a couple times. I did interviews with her. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. That's your girl? That's what you aspire to be? No, yeah, why, not, why not? not? Why? Because Wendy like men in dresses. <laughs> I don't. Oh. Okay, all right then. <laughs> Enough said then. Okay. Don't okay. the mic on that one. Boom, okay. That's what she like? Okay. okay. Listen, <laughs> is there anything else you want to cover? It's not, Pierre. We thank you so much for coming to Let me close with that. super oh. awesome and amazing. Um, we're looking forward to, I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, we ordered your book. Where you ordered from? Amazon. Amazon.com. Amazon That's what you said. Right, right. And, and can I say my... You uh, brought us a book, but... I did bring your book. Okay, I did. Well, I ordered yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. I appreciate that. I still that. ordered it, though. Well, thank you. That's why I had to bring your book, but I brought you one anyway. I brought you one to have on here to show. I'm going to take it when I leave. But um, <laughs> hey, catch me on IG at Comic Pierre. Can you tell yes. that? We're going to do yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So all, my, all, my, all my fans, C-O-M-I-C-P-I-E-R-R-E. -R -R -E. Comic Pierre on Instagram or, or Comic Pierre on all the social media platforms. And check out my new uh, my, uh, web series, Dating Pierre on YouTube. It's funny. It's about me dating different chicks in Atlanta. Let me tell you, I've dated from eight to 18 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy. You say 18-year-olds? Okay, come on, now they're legal. It's a legal estate. Okay. <laughs> legal estate. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I got I, I think I think for those who want to watch this, I'm going to say she remind me, I did seven episodes. You remind me of date number... She like date number seven. You know, watch date number seven. Lucky date number seven. Yeah, yeah no, that's okay. Date number seven. And her over here, that, that's all, every bit of date number three. She date number three. So when you're watching on YouTube, she's number three, she's number seven. And tell me I ain't lying. Number seven. Date number seven was too much for him. Ooh, okay. Too much for him. Oh, please watch the ending of that. Please watch the <laughs> end of that. And remember her when you watch the end of that. Please.
That was another episode with our guest comedian, Pierre. And let us know how you feel in the comments below. Do our comedians need white laughter or white acceptance to reach a certain level of success? Until next week, it's CJ and Shade with Comedy Hype News. <laughs>